Welcome to the Israel of God's program, The Bible Speaks, where we teach the Bible by subject and title. And this program is designed to help you understand your Bible better. And today's title is The Love of the World or The Love of God. I'll be your teacher, Brother Sean, and reading for me is Brother Joseph. Again, the title is The Love of the World or The Love of God. Because in this life, brothers and sisters, you're going to have to make a decision. Either you're going to choose the love of the world or you're going to choose the love of God. Because one thing, the Lord didn't create you. He didn't force you to serve him. He made you a free agent. You're going to have to make that decision. You're going to serve the Lord or you're going you're gonna to look for the things in the world. And that's what we're going to do. But uh, before we start this lesson, we're going to get an understanding. We're going to establish what love is, what the Lord thinks about love. So let's start this off in Romans, the 13th chapter. Let's start this in Romans 13 because we've got to establish what love is. Because you got to choose either the love of God or you got to choose the love of the world. It's going to be up to you. The books say, let every man seek out his own salvation with fear and trembling. But Romans 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Romans 13 and verse 8, Brother Joseph, when you get it, go ahead and read. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Uh -huh. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Fulfilled the law. What law? That's the royal law. That's the commandments. Go ahead and read. For this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill. Yes. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is what love is. This is how the Lord looks at love. Go ahead and read, brother. Love will give no ill to his neighbor. Uh -huh. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And what law is that? That's the commandments. That's the royal law. That's why Peter told you love covers a multitude of sins. And this, this is the love you got to have. If you're going to choose the love of God, how do you choose it? By keeping those commandments. Huh. Because he said he prayed. He prayed not for the world. Because the Lord also told you that you got to be in the world, but be not of the world. So we got to choose that love of God and not the love of the world. And that's what we're going to look at. But let's go a little further. Let's go to John, the third chapter. Let's go to John, the third chapter. And this might be, huh, this is one of the most famous scriptures in the Bible, if not the most famous scripture in the Bible. John, the third chapter. And we're going to take a look at the, 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 uh, uh, the love of the Lord. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, oh, God don't love the world. You know, he, why is he letting all these things happen? Why is all this evil going on? Huh. The Lord told you that he loved those that love him. And how do you love him? By keeping his commandments, by being obedient. That's how you love the Lord. But John 3 and 15, we're going to pick it up at John 3 and 15. When you get it, go ahead and read, Joseph. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We're talking about Jesus here, people. Believing in Jesus. Go ahead and read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because it's Jesus, people. If you want salvation, you have to go through Jesus. There's salvation in no other name. Jesus is the door. But go ahead and read, brother. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Yes. But that the world through him might be saved. That's right, because when Jesus came and he died on that cross, people, that it gave us a new chance. It brought us a new hope that we can have right back to the Father. Because the book says he came to save that which was lost. Because in the beginning, Adam took that away from us when he sinned in the garden. Let's go a little further. Second Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter 3, we're dealing with the love of the world or the love of God. We're going to take a look at some examples huh, of, 
of if you choose to love the world, the consequences of that. And if you choose the love of God, the benefits of that. We're going to take a look at all that. Let's go to 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter, the third chapter. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, man, <laughs> Jesus ain't coming. They've been saying that for years. He ain't coming back. They've been saying Jesus was coming for, for, for years. They've been saying that since I was a child. That's what the world is saying, people. But the Lord told us something. Let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. Pick it up in verse 8, Brother Joseph. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Be not ignorant of this one thing. In other words, don't be unlearned of this one thing. Go ahead. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Uh-huh. And a thousand years as one day. So in Genesis, when the Lord said in the evening and the morning was the first day, that was a thousand years. Ain't that something? That was a thousand years. But the world is saying, oh, God ain't coming back. God don't love the world. Why is he allowing all this stuff to go on? This is why. Go ahead and read, brother. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slack. And that's what they saying. Uh, the Lord is slacking. He ain't coming back. Why is all this evil going on? Why he ain't doing nothing about it? Go ahead and read, brother. But his long suffering to us. And that's the mercy of God. He is long suffering to us. Why? Go ahead. Not willing that any should perish. Not willing that any should perish. This is the love of God, people. Go ahead. But that all should come to repentance. So the reason the Lord is allowing this stuff to happen, he's waiting for the world to come into repentance, people. He is not willing that any should perish. This is the mercy of God. This is the love of God. But he say, I love those that love me. And how do you love the Lord? By keeping his commandments. Is that it on that one? Yes. Let's go to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Let's go to Matthew, the 18th chapter. We see that Jesus said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come into repentance. That is the love of God. And I can tell you one thing, the world don't have that love for you. The world don't have that love for you. Matthew, the 18th chapter. We see that Jesus is not willing that any should perish. Let's see how the Father feels about this thing. Matthew 18, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Matthew 18 and 11, brother, when you get it, go ahead and read. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Because in Genesis, I, look, you can read that Adam took that away. Adam sinned in the garden, which brought death into the world, people. Go ahead and read. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, do if he not leave the ninety and nine, and go up into the mountains, and see if that which is gone astray? See, now this is a parable that the Lord is telling us. But this is going to show you the love that the Father got. We see that son, the Son, Jesus, he said he's not willing that any shall perish. But take a look at this parable. A, a certain man had a hundred sheep, and one of them went astray. Go ahead and read, brother. And if so be that he find it, fairly I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep yes. than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. Even so it was not the will of your Father which is in heaven uh -huh. that one of these little ones should perish. We see that Jesus said he's not willing that any should perish, but the Father also. He said it's not the will of the Father that any of these little ones should perish. That's the mercy of God. That's that long suffering. That's the love of God. And I can tell you that the world don't have that love for you. But you got to love God as well by keeping those commandments. Go ahead and read, brother. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, uh -huh. go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Yes. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And these are the, this is what we need to do in, in, in the world too, people. This is how we're supposed to treat our brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord is telling us. Go ahead and read. But if he will not hear thee, yes. then take with thee one or two more, uh -huh. that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Go ahead and read. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Go ahead. But if he neglect to hear the church... Let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. See, they, these are the steps of how you're supposed to treat your brother and your sister if you have an alt with them. Go ahead and read. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth uh -huh. shall be bound in heaven. Yes. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Ain't that something? That's why the books say you shall reap uh, what you're going to sow. Go ahead and read. Again, I say unto you yes. that if two of you shall agree on earth yes. as touching anything that they shall ask, uh -huh. it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. And that's the name of Jesus, people. Go ahead. There am I in the midst of them. Ain't that something? But that's the love of God. That's the same love that we got to show to our brothers and sisters. If you have an alt with your brother and your sister, you take it to them first. And if that don't work, you go get you two or three witnesses. And then come together. And if that don't work, then you go to the church. 
Those are the order of things. But that's, that's the order of that love we're supposed to show. Now let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter, because we're going to take a look at something. We're going to see that if you so happen to choose the love of the world, what's waiting on the other end? If you so happen to choose the love of the world, what's waiting on the other end? Because it's going to be payday one day. And if you choose the love of God and you start keeping those commandments, it's going to be a crown of life waiting for you. But if you choose the love of the world, a fiery damnation that should devour the adversaries is what's going to be waiting for you. But Luke 4, the first chapter, let's take a look at something. Luke 4 and verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh huh. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Go ahead. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. I bet after 40 days I'd be hungry too if I didn't eat nothing for 40 days. But go ahead and read. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. See, the devil gonna try to tempt the Lord right here, but go ahead and read. Let's and, see what Jesus said. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, yes. but by every word of God. That's right. And that, you see how when, you, when the devil come upon you, you got to resist him by using that word of God. You see how Jesus say, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Because you could read that the Lord led the whole nation of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. And the book said that they clothes wax not old. They shoes didn't get old. And they was fed for 40 years. That shows you that man don't live by bread alone. That's the love of God as well. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But go ahead and read, brother. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. But see, we're going to see and show you that the God of this world right now, people, is Satan the devil. And all he can offer you is temporary things. Go ahead and read. Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Ain't that something? He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Ain't that something? But that's all he can offer you. It's the kingdoms of the world. And the books say the world is going to pass away. But the word of God endure forever. Go ahead and read, brother. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. Uh -huh. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Ain't that something? The devil say, Unto whomsoever I will, I give it. He can only offer you the kingdoms of the world. He say, To whomsoever I will, I give it. And if you want the love of the world, it's under one condition. And what is that? Go ahead and read. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Ain't that something? Satan said, if you want all the kingdoms of the world, you should worship him. So sometimes when you see all these people getting famous and they're getting all this money, who do you think might be blessing them with all that money and all that fame and giving them all the kingdoms of the world? But don't get me wrong, God could bless you as well. However, we see that if you're not serving God and you start to be famous and getting all this money in the world, we know who's blessing you with that. But go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Yes. Get thee behind me, uh -huh. Satan. Yeah. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. That's right. And you see how Jesus keep hitting him with that word. Every time Satan came upon him, he hit him with that word. Hit him with that word. But those are, that's the kingdoms of the world, people. Satan is the God of this world. And he can only offer you the kingdoms of the world, temporary things that's going to pass away. So if you choose the love of the world, you got some consequences waiting for you. Because huh. Satan said, he, if all should be thine if you bow down and worship me. That's something to think about. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John, the fifth chapter. 1 John, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> The love of the world or the love of God, people, you got to make a decision. I'm choosing the love of God. 1 John 5, we're going to pick this up at verse 18. When you get it, go ahead and read, bro. We know that whosoever is born of God, sin of not. That's right, because being born of God means you're being born again. And you, but you are God at that point, and you can't sin. Go ahead. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, uh -huh. and that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one is Satan. Because when you begotten to God, you're walking in God. You're keeping these laws and statutes. Go ahead. And we know that we are of God. I know I am of God. Go ahead. And the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness, people. So if you choose the love of the world, what category do you think you fall under? Wicked. You got to choose the love of God. 
The whole world laugh in wickedness. The whole world is out of course. That's something to think about. That's why in Matthew, the seventh chapter, he tell you uh, straight is the gate and wide is the, is, the, is the way that lead up to destruction. So when you start seeing what the world is doing, huh, you go the opposite way. Because nine times out of ten, what the world is doing, is they leading you right to damnation. Be in the world, but be not of the world. And we're going to look at it. Choose the love of God, people. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I hope this is making sense. You got to choose the love of, of God because this world is going to pass away. This world is going to pass away. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. This is what the world is full of, people. Evil and wickedness. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Pick it up at verse 1, Brother Joseph. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, uh -huh. as we have received mercy, yes. we faint not, Go ahead. but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. The hidden things of dishonesty. That's what's in the world now. Dishonesty. Go ahead. Not walking in craftiness. Craftiness. Go ahead. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. There's people out here handling the word of God deceitfully every Sunday. That's why when the disciples came to Jesus, they asked him, what are the signs of your second coming? The first thing Jesus said was, take heed that no man deceive you. Because they out here handling the word of God deceitfully. Go ahead and read. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Go ahead. But if our gospel be here, uh -huh. it is here to them that are lost. Because it's here to them that are lost. Because we preaching this thing. And if you can't see this thing, it's a reason why you can't see it. Go ahead and read. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world, we know as Satan the devil, people. He has blinded the eyes that believe of the ones that believe not. Go ahead and read. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, yes. should shine unto them. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. But we preach not ourselves, uh -huh. but Christ Jesus out the Lord. That's right. And that's what we're doing here at the Israel of God. We preach Jesus, people, from Genesis to Revelation. Go ahead and read. And ourselves, your service for Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. That's what we do in this thing, for the Jesus' sake, for the word's sake. And sometimes persecution will come up on you too when you're preaching this thing. Not sometimes, most of the time. That's why you're reading Jeremiah. He said every time he spoke of the name of Jesus, he, he received affliction. But he said that thing was shut up in my bones. He had no choice but to speak. That's how I feel in this world. I'm seeing things going on. And I just think about that. Think about the Bible. And in the world now, sometimes when you read, when you're watching the news, it's just like reading the Bible almost sometimes. Because you can see how the Lord has got this thing and he's unfolding this thing. Let's go to James, the fourth chapter. James, the fourth chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse one. James four and one. The love of the world. Or the love of God. The God of this world had blinded the eyes of the non-believers. That's why a lot of times when you're preaching this thing, you can't, they can't see it because the God of this world has blinded them. James 4 and verse 1, brother, when you get it, go ahead and read. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Yes. Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Go ahead and read. Ye lust and have not. Uh-huh. Ye kill and desire to have. Uh-huh. And cannot obtain. Ain't that something? That's what we do when you look in the world now. That's all what's going on. They killing, but they still have not. They killing, they still don't get what they really want or what they really looking for. It's all because of the lust of the flesh. Go ahead. Ye fight in war. Yeah. Yet ye have not. Uh huh. Because ye ask not. Go ahead. Ye ask and receive not. Why is that? Because ye ask amiss. You ask amiss. In other words, you ask it for the wrong reasons. Oh God, let me. Please let me hit the lottery, oh great God. I'll be in class every week. Every Sabbath I'll be in class if I hit the lottery. You praying on that? <laughs> Lord knows if you hit the lottery, he ain't going to see you in class. But go ahead and read. That ye make consume it upon your lust. That's, that's, what, that's why you're asking, you asking the wrong things. Because you're trying to consume it upon your lust. But this is what's going on in the world. Go ahead and read. Ye adulterers and adulteress. And he's talking spiritual right here. Because you can commit physical adultery and you can co commit spiritual adultery. By serving other gods. Go ahead. 
Ye adulterers and adulterers. Go ahead. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Read that one more time, brother. Ye adulterers and adulterers. Yes. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? It's enmity with God. That means hostile towards or even hatred towards God. Friendship of the world. So if you choose the love of the world, what are you really doing? Who are you really serving? That's why you serve. That's why you, uh, uh, you want the love of God. Go ahead and read. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world uh -huh. is the enemy of God. One more time, Brother Joseph. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world yes. is the enemy of God. So if you choose the love of the world, brothers and sisters, you are choosing to be an enemy of God. That's why I say whatever you see the world doing, you go the opposite way. Because the God of this world has surely blinded the world's eyes and deceived. The book say in Revelation 12 chapter, Satan has deceived the whole world. You got to choose the love of God, people. Keep these commandments. We just read in Romans that the love of God is fulfilling the law. Keeping those commandments. It's only 10 of them. And you got your dietary law and you got the feast day. Let's go to John the 17th chapter now. Let's go to John the 17th chapter. Let's take a look at this parable. Because this is all showing you the love of God right here. And I'm hearing that, oh, God don't love you. Like I said before, he loved those that love him. But once you start keeping these commandments, surely you're going to see the love of God. But you got to keep these commandments in, in order to do that. John 17, Brother Joseph. John 17, and let's start it at, uh, let's start at verse 9. John 17 and 9, Brother Joseph. When you get to go ahead and read. I pray for them. And this is Jesus talking about his disciples and the believers. He pray for them. Go ahead. I pray not for the world. He pray not for the what? I pray not for the world. He pray not for the world. So if you choose the love of the world, uh-oh, you might have an issue here. Go ahead and read. But for them which thou hast given me, yes. for they are thine. Go ahead. And all mine are thine, uh -huh. and thine are mine. Yes. And I am glorified in them. Go ahead. And now I am no more in the world, uh -huh. but these are in the world. That's right. Jesus said, I ain't no more in the world, but these. He's talking about his disciples and the ones that believe in him. And keep his commandments. Go ahead. And I come to thee, uh -huh. Holy Father. Yes, this keep, is the prayer that Jesus said to the Father. Go ahead. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. Yes. That they may be one as we are. And see, when the Lord say him and the Father are one, we're not talking about one person, that the Father and the Son is one, one being. He's talking about one mindset. We are one. We are on the same mindset. We're on the same accord. That's how the Father and the Son are one, and that's how we got to be. All on one accord. Go ahead and read. While I was with them in the world, yes. I kept them in thy name. And that's the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Those that thou gavest me, uh -huh. I have kept. Yes. And none of them is lost. Go ahead. But the son of perdition. Right, and that's talking about Judas, people. You go on your own time, you can go and read about the story of Judas when he betrayed Jesus. But go ahead and read. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Go ahead. And now come I to thee, uh -huh. and these things I speak in the world. You speak these in the world, go ahead. That they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Go ahead. I have given them that word. We're talking about the word of the Father. It, go, it comes from the Father, goes to Jesus, goes to the angel, then it goes to Israel, and Israel is the one supposed to give it to the world. Go ahead and read. And the world has hated them. Go ahead. Because they are not of the world. They are not of the world. We're talking about the believers and the disciples. That's, I'm, part of, I'm one of those. Go ahead and read. Even as I am not of the world. See, Jesus is one of the world. He was in the world, but he wasn't of the world. Go ahead. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Because where are you going to go? Go ahead. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. And what is the world full of? Evil, people. Keep them from the evil that is in this world. Because we read that the whole world lies in wickedness. That's why you got to choose the love of God and not the love of the world. Because it ain't nothing but evil in the love in the world, people. Go ahead and read, Brother Joseph. They are not of the world, uh -huh. even as I am not of the world. Yes, sir. Sanctify them through thy truth. What is thy truth? Thy word is true. That's the word. That's what's going to sanctify you. That's what's going to set you apart. It's the word of God. The love of God is what's going to set you apart. Go ahead and read, brother. As thou hast sent me into the world, yes. even so have I also sent them into the world. Go ahead. And for their sakes, I sanctified myself, uh -huh. that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And the truth is the word of God, people. Go ahead, Brother Joseph. Neither pray I for these alone, uh -huh. but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's what I'm saying. That's why Jesus said he prayed for his disciples and also for the believers. 
for the ones who are walking in this thing and keeping his commandments and keeping the faith of Jesus. Go ahead and read. That they all may be one. Uh-huh. As thou, Father, art in me. That's right. That's that I one accord. Thee. That's that one accord thing. They on one accord, that one mindset. Philippians, the second chapter, tell you, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We got to be on one accord, Brother Joseph. Go ahead and read, brother. That they also may be one in us. Uh -huh. That the world may believe that thou hast sent that me. That the Father has sent the Son. Go ahead and read. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Yes. That they may be one, yes. even as we are one. That's that one accord thing again. That the world, the believers should be as one. On one accord. Go ahead. I and them, uh -huh. and thou and me. Yes. That they may be made perfect in one. Go ahead. That the world may know that thou hast sent me. Uh huh. And hast loved them as thou hast loved me. That's the love of God, people. Do you see that? That's the love of God, not the love of the world. Go ahead and read. Father, I will that they also. Whom thou hast given me, uh -huh. be with me where I am, uh -huh. that they may behold my glory, Ooh. which thou hast given me. Go ahead, brother. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Because Jesus was in the beginning. He don't have a beginning or no end. But go ahead and read. The book say that they took sweet counsel together. They took sweet counsel to decide who was going to take on the role of the son and go down there and die for the sins of the people. That's the love of God, people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For those that believe, in other words, in order to believe, you got to keep those commandments and walk in this day. Go ahead and finish that out, Joseph. O righteous father, the world hath not known thee, uh -huh. but I have known thee. That's right, and the world still don't know thee. We preaching this thing. That's why John told you he like a voice crying out in the wilderness. Because we trying to preach this thing, but ain't nobody listening. The world want to go their way. What's the status quo? They want to go to what's popular. Go ahead and read. And these have known that thou hast sent me. Uh-huh. Verse 26. And I have declared unto them thy name. That's the name of Jesus, people. Go ahead. And will declare it. Uh-huh. the love wherewith thou hast loved me, yes. they be in them, yes. and I in them. Because when you choose the love of God, people, you are walking in God. You are walking these in, in these commandments. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's not hard. It's really not hard. But we got to make the decision. We got to. Let every man seek out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Your mother can't save you. Your pastor can't save you. You got to save yourself. You got to make a decision. Because God is not going to force you to serve him. He laid it out for you. I said before you, life and death, good and evil. Choose life and live. Choose the love of God and live. Don't choose the love of the world because that's going to lead you right to damnation. Let's go to Luke, the 15th chapter. Let's go to Luke, the 15th chapter. You with me, Joseph? Yeah. Luke 15, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 10. Luke 15, and we're going to pick this up at verse 10. And take a look at another parable that the Lord is showing us. Luke 15 and 10. When you get it, go ahead, Brother Joseph. Likewise, I say unto you, yes. there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So when a sinner turn from his wickedness and repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, the angels in heaven rejoice. Huh. That's the love of God as well. Because the world ain't going to love you. You get baptized in the name of Jesus, your family going to turn against you. That's why the Lord told you a man's foes should be those of his own household. That's where it's going to start at. But go ahead and read. And he said, a certain man had two sons. Now take a look at this parable. A certain man had two sons. Go ahead. And the younger of them said to his father, uh -huh. Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Yes. And he divided unto them his living. See, now the two sons, he had the younger one. And the younger one said, divide me my portion. And the father split it up. Go ahead and read. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together uh -huh. and took his journey into a far country. Yes. And they're wasting his substance with riotous living. So, so this younger son, he went, he went out into the world huh, and wasted all his substance, wasted what the father has given him with riotous living. What is riotous? Uncontrolled, wild living. Sound like some of these young brothers now, right? They get a little money and they go in the world and they spending it up. That money burning a hole in their pocket. Sound like that's what this younger son is doing. 
Well, go ahead and read. And when he had spent all, uh -huh. there arose a mighty famine in that land. Uh -huh. and, he had, and he began to be in want. That's right. And that's what happens in his life, too. When you're balling for a minute, you know, you got money in your pocket, you're rolling good, and all of a sudden that famine kick in. Now you're going to spend all your money. Yeah. Well, go ahead and read. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Uh -huh. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Go ahead. And he, would, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Uh -huh. And no man gave unto him. Ain't this something? Now this dude is feeding swine now. He had the substance that his father gave him. Well, he spent that all up and now he doing this. But well, he thought about it. Go ahead and read. And when he came to himself. When he came to himself, he started to think, let me use some wisdom now. Go ahead. He said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? Uh -huh. And I pass with hunger. See, this is a parable that the Lord is showing you the love of God. Because the Lord told you. David said, I have been old and now I'm young. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. There's always bread in the house of the Lord. So this guy, this younger son is thinking, my father got servants and they ain't. They ain't hungry. I done left. I went into the world and, and now I'm starving out here. But the Lord is showing us something. Go ahead and read. I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father. Sound like this brother's starting to repent now. Go ahead. And we'll say unto him, uh -huh. Father, I have sinned against heaven. Yes. And before thee. Go ahead. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Sound like this repenting to me. Go ahead. Make me as one of thy hired servants. I know that's right. Go ahead and read. And he arose and came to his father. But when he saw... But, but when he was yet a great way off, yes. his father saw him uh -huh. and had compassion. Ain't that something? His father saw him from a great way off and had compassion on his younger son. His younger son went in the world, but when he came back and he turned and repented, came back to his father, his father had compassion on him. That was the last uh, uh, what, what he thought uh, he was going to get. He thought his father was going to throw him off, kick him to the curb. But when his father seen him, he had compassion. What else happened? Go and ahead. And ran. Yes. And fell on his neck. Uh huh. And kissed him. Ain't that something? That's the love that the Lord is showing. That the love that the Lord got for us. That's the love the Lord got for us. When you turn from your wickedness and you turn to the Lord and start walking in His ways and doing what is right, that's the same compassion that the Lord is gonna have for you. The father was was with open arms. But go ahead and read, Joseph. And the son said unto him, Yes, Father. I have sinned against heaven uh -huh. and in thy sight. Yes. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Ain't that something? That's repenting right there, people. Go ahead. But the father said to his servants, Yes. Bring forth best robe. Bring forth the best robe. Go ahead. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Uh huh. And put a ring on his hand. Yes. And shoes on his feet. Go ahead. And bring hither the fatted calf. Uh huh. And kill it. Yes. And let us eat uh -huh. and be merry. See, now they, he said, let's feast on this thing, because why? Go ahead and read. For this, my son was dead. For his son was dead, because his son went into the world, but turned around and came back. Go ahead. And is alive again. Uh-huh. He was lost. Yes. And is found. Yes. And they began to be married. See, that's why the Lord say, when a sinner repenteth, the angels in heaven rejoice. Just like we read about the parable, a certain man had a hundred sheep, and one of them went astray. But when that one sheep, he went and found it. He rejoiced more for that one than the 90 and 9. That's the love of God, people. When you turn to the Lord and start doing what is right, that's the same compassion that the Lord is going to have on you. That's because his mercy endure forever. Go ahead and read. Now his eldest son was in the field. Uh -huh. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, Go ahead. He, heard, he heard music and dancing. Now the oldest son like, hold on, what's going on down here? Go ahead and read. And he called one of the servants. And asked what these things meant. He said, what are they doing? What has my father got going on down here? Go ahead and read. And he said unto him, Yes. Thy brother is come. Uh-huh. And thy father hath killed the fatty calf. Go ahead. Because he had received him safe and sound. Sound like they was feasting because his son is, was lost and now he is now found. But the older son started to do a little hating a little bit. Go ahead and read. And he was angry. Oh, the older son was angry. Sound like he was hating a little bit. Go ahead. And would not go in. Oh, man, come on now. Don't do your brother like that. Go ahead and read. Therefore came his father out uh -huh. and entreated him. Go ahead. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. That's right. See, the older son like, Father, I never left your side. The younger son went into the world. Go ahead. Neither transgressed I any time thy commandment. Uh -huh. And yet thou never gavest me a kid. Go ahead. That I might make merry with my friends. He said, I've been with you this whole time. You never had a party for me. It sounded like that. the older son was hating a little bit, right? But go ahead and read. But as soon as this thy son was come. As soon as that younger son has came back, go ahead. Which have devoured thy living with harlots. See, this brother was living with riotous living. 
with harlots. Go ahead. Thou hast killed for him the fatty cow. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Yes. Son, thou art ever with me. He said, you are ever with me. That's like the 99 sheep that never left. Go ahead. And all that I have is thine. That's right. That's why the Lord say, I come to uh, save the sinners, not the righteous. Go ahead. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. Why? For this thy brother was dead. Because your brother was dead. And is alive again. Go ahead. And was lost. And what? And is found. See, and that's the love of God, people. That is the love of God. And trust me, the love of the world is not going to have that love for you. The world want to see you perish. But when you turn and come back to the Lord, that's the love of God. You were lost, and we all was lost at one point. I know I was. Before I came in this world, I was lost. But the Father drew me, and now I'm found. He have removed the scales from my eyes, and I can see this thing. Not all the way, but I can see a little bit. He gave me just enough understanding that I could save myself. And he's going to do it for you as well. But you got to want this thing. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek, seek him. Let's go to Mark, the fourth chapter now. I hope we're getting some understanding. I hope y'all with me. Mark, the fourth chapter. We got to choose the love of God. Not the love of the world. Mark 4, and let's pick it up at uh, verse 16. Mark 4 and verse 16, when you get it, Brother Joseph, go ahead and read. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Now, this is the parable of the sowing of the seeds. And when you're coming into this word now, you're going to fall under one of these four categories. We ain't going to deal with all four. We're just going to deal with a few of them for, the, for time's sake. But on your own, you can read the, uh, this whole parable. It's the parable of the sowing of the seeds. But go ahead and read, brother. Who, when they have heard the word, yes. immediately received it with gladness. Yes, now this is one of the categories you're going to fall under. When you hear that word, you immediately receive it with gladness. Oh, man, this is some good stuff. I want to tell my family. Go ahead and read. And have no run in themselves. Uh-huh. And so endure but for a time. Yeah. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, go ahead. immediately they are offended. Ain't that something? Because when you come into this word and you start trying to do what, what thus said the Lord, your family going to turn on you. You're going to become the black sheep of the family. <laughs> and when that persecution and affliction arise, it might snatch the word right from you. Because you're like, man, my family don't even want to be around me no more. That's how heavy this word is. But go ahead and read. And these are they which are sown among thorns, uh -huh. such as hear the word. Now pay attention. These are they that are sown among thorns. These are the ones that hear the word, but go ahead and read. And the cares of this world. So the one, and the cares of this world, in other words, the love of this world, go ahead. And the deceitfulness of riches. Oh, man, go ahead. And the lust of other things entering in. What, it, what does it choke do? Choke the word. Oh, man, go ahead. And it becometh unfruitful. They choke the word right out of you because the cares of this world. That's why you can't love the world. It's going to lead you to damnation. When you receive this word, you start trying to go back to the world. The cares of the world is going to choke the word from you. You're going to start seeing, oh, man, they partying on Saturday, uh, Friday nights. But we know that that's the Lord's Sabbath day. I can't go out and do my own pleasures on that day, but the world is doing it. I want to go be with my friends. This word took me away from my friends. But you got to see that. Don't let the cares of this world take you out. Go ahead and read, brother. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Uh-huh. Such as hear the word. Yes. And receive it. Go ahead. And bring forth fruit. Yes. Some 30-fold. Go ahead. Some 60 and some in hundreds. That's right. And I see my elder brother. Huh. When you sown on good ground, you bring forth some 30, some 50, some 100. This brother got churches all around the world. I see the fruits of his labor. But that's it on that. That's verse 20. Yes. Let's go to 2 Peter. Let's go to 2 Peter, uh, 2 Peter the second chapter, people. And we're just taking a look at this thing. 2 Peter the second chapter. It's not really hard. The Lord said, let no man beguile you from the simplicity that is in Christ. Let no man. 2 Peter 2. And uh, let's go. We're going to pick it up at uh, verse 20. Uh, yeah, verse 20. 2 Peter 2 and verse 20. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, when after you escape the pollutions of the world, because the world is full of pollutions, people. The, the world is not trying to serve God. 
Go ahead. They are again entangled therein. Go ahead. And overcome. Yes. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Ain't that something? So if you try to turn to the Lord and you start doing what is right, but then you go back to the world, the books say the latter end is worse than the beginning. Huh. That's something to think about. And this scripture also say when you when, when, when a dog returned to his vomit, they received seven more devils worse than the ones before. And I don't know about you, brother. But if I receive seven more devils, huh, I'm already in trouble with the ones I got. You know what I mean? We're trying to do this thing right. I can't afford no more demons on me. Go ahead and read, brother. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Ooh, it's better for them not to know the way of righteousness if you turn back to that world once you come into the word. Go ahead. Then, after they have known it, yes. to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Go ahead and read, brother. For it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. Go ahead. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. Yes. And the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Ain't that something? So when you come into this word and you leave the world behind you, you cannot go back. It's kind of like when Lot's wife, huh, when she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt because it felt like she was missing something. Or she was going to miss something. She looked back. But you can't go back to the world. You come into the love of God, you got to stay in this thing. Walk in this thing. Uh, 1 John, the second chapter now. 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. The love of God or the love of the world. You got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. 1 John 2 and verse 14. When you get it, brother, go ahead. I have written unto you, fathers, uh -huh. because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Go ahead. I have written unto you, young men, yes. because ye are strong, uh -huh. and the word of God abideth in you. Uh -huh. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Go ahead. Love not the world. One more time, brother Joseph. Love not the world. Go ahead. Neither the things that are in the world. Go ahead. If any man love the world, yes. the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't serve two masters because you're going to love one and hate the other. So if you love the world, the love of God cannot be in you. Go ahead and read. For all that is in the world. Yes. The lust of the flesh. This is what's all in the world. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. It's not of the Father, uh -huh. but it's of the world. That's of the world. So when you love the world, these are the things that you're choosing. And the whole world laughing wickedness. Satan, look, Satan got the same tricks. The, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? Go ahead and read. And the world passeth away. As I told you, he can only offer you the kingdoms of this world. But this world is going to pass away. But the word of God endure forever. Go ahead and read. And the lust thereof. Uh-huh. But he that doeth the will of God. Yes. Abideth forever. That's eternal life, people. On the good side of the kingdom. If you choose the love of God, you got a crown of life waiting for you. That's why uh, in Timothy it tells you, uh, there's a crown, Paul told you, there's a crown of life waiting for me. But not to me only, but to them also that love his appearing. Let's go to 1 Peter now. <laughs> but if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's pretty simple, ain't it? Love not the world, neither the things of the world. I hope y'all writing this down and go back over this at your own leisure. These are small little, little scriptures that really don't, we don't pay attention to, but when you put them all together, it tells you a whole story. It tells you a whole story. That's why the Lord tells you go here a little and there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. First Peter 1, pick it up at verse 3, Brother Joseph. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope yes. by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's right, because when Jesus rose from the dead, that brought us a lively hope. Because before that, we had no hope. The whole world was going to that lake of fire. We'll go ahead and read. To any air that is incorruptible. We're talking about God now, people. Go ahead. And undefiled. Yes. And that fade is not away. Go ahead. Preserved in heaven for you. Uh-huh. Who are kept by the power of God 
through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Yes, go ahead. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, uh -huh. though now for a season. Yes. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Go ahead. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that Ooh, perishes. Go ahead. Though it be tried with fire. Yes. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's right, because your trials and tribulations are going to be like gold tried in the fire. Because when Jesus came, he went through, they, they, they beat him. They spit on him. They slapped him. They plucked the hairs off of him. Jesus went through all that. And you think you're just going to walk in the kingdom, scotch free? No, it's going to be some affliction, people. You got to endure until the end. But go ahead and read. Whom having not seen. Yes. Ye love. You ain't seen, but you love. How do you love? Because you're keeping the commandments of God. Go ahead. In whom? Yes. So now ye see him not. Uh-huh. Yet believe it. Go ahead. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Go ahead. Receiving the end of your faith. Yes. Even the salvation of your soul. So when you choose the love of God, brothers and sisters, that is the salvation of your soul. That is the saving of your soul. When you endure to the end, he got a crown of life waiting for you. And I got to lean on that. That's what the book tells me. Let's go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let's go take a look at the beginning and see in the times of Noah and compare the times of Noah huh, and to the times of right now, people. Let's see if we can see any difference. Genesis, the sixth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1. Genesis 6. We're going to pick this up at verse 1. I'm ready when you are, Brother Joseph. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, uh -huh. and daughters were born unto them. Go ahead. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, uh -huh. that they were fair. Uh -huh. And they took them wives of all which they chose. See, and that, you got some people saying that this is when the angels laid with the daughters of men and had babies. That's not the case, people. And in another lesson, we can show you that the sons of God are also man. Okay? But go ahead and read. And the Lord said, my spirit should not always strive with man. Uh-huh. You see right there, we, talk about, we ain't talking about angels sleeping with, with the daughters of men. Go ahead. But that he also is flesh. Yes, go ahead. And his days shall be in 120 years. See, the Lord chopped down man's years because they started to do, it was so much wickedness going on. He, he chopped their years down to 120 years. But well, skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Read, read that one more time. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. I wonder what he see now. Huh. If it was wicked like this back then, what's going on right now? This is the wickedness of the world right now. Go ahead. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And that it's the same thing that's going on to this day, people. All the imaginations of man's mind is wicked. Go ahead. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. It repented him. Go ahead. And it grieved him at his heart. Uh-huh. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Go ahead. Both man and beast uh -huh. and the creeping things yes. and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. The Lord said he's going to destroy man from off the earth because the, e the thoughts of man was evil continually. I wonder what he's thinking about right now in this time. We see all the evil going on in this time. Uh, hey, that's why he told you that the end to his second coming is going to be like the days of Noah. But go ahead and read. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This right here, this scripture shows me that I got a chance. Because all this evil that's going on in the world, the Lord seen grace in Noah. But go ahead and read. These are the generations of Noah. Uh -huh. Noah was a just man. Yes, he was. And perfect in his generation. Go ahead. And Noah walked with God. Go ahead. If you walk with God, keep his laws and commandments, walk in his ways, he's going to be right there with you. He say, I'll be a little sanctuary to you. Go ahead and read. Verse 11. Yes. The earth also was corrupt before God. The earth also was corrupt before God. Just like today. Look at the world. It's corrupt before God. Go ahead. And the earth was filled with violence. That's what it is right now. Go ahead. And God looked upon the earth, uh -huh. and behold, yes. it was corrupt. He looked upon the earth, and it was corrupt. He's looking right now. What you think is going on right now? It's corrupt now. Go ahead. For all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. And you can see it right now, all the killing going on, all the sodomy going on. The earth is full of wickedness, people. You can't choose the love of this world. It'll get you cut off. 
Go ahead. And God said unto Noah, yes. the end of all flesh is coming for me. Uh -huh. The earth is filled with violence yeah. from them. Yeah, go and ahead. And the old, I will destroy them with the earth. He's going to destroy the world with the earth, people. I mean, he's going to destroy man with the earth, people. Huh. And that's just how the world is right now. It's evil continually. Let's go to 2 Peter, the second chapter, Joseph. 2 Peter, the second chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 4. 2 Peter 2 and verse 4. When you get it, I'm ready when you are. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, uh -huh. but cast them down to hell. Go ahead. And delivered them into chains of darkness uh -huh. to be reserved unto judgment. Yes. And spared not the old world, uh -huh. but saved Noah the eighth person. He saved Noah the eighth person. Go ahead. A preacher of righteousness, uh -huh. bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And the world right now is full of the ungodly. Go ahead. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah uh -huh. into ashes, condemn them with an overflow. That's a uh, 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 Sodom and Gomorrah, a city full of Sodomites. Go ahead. Making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Making them an example, people. So if Sodom and Gomorrah was an example for those that live ungodly, why would I choose the world? Why would I choose to live ungodly? Why would I choose to be like those people in Sodom and Gomorrah? Homosexuals. They was an example. He annihilated that city. Go ahead and read. And deliver just like. Uh huh. That's with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Go ahead. For that righteous man dwelleth among dwelling among them. Yes. In seeing and hearing. Yes. Vex his righteous soul from day to day yeah. with their unlawful deeds. And that's, that's how I feel today when I'm in the world. They vexing me. I'm seeing all this evil and this wickedness and this confusion. It's vexing my soul. Go ahead and read. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. That's why you see sometimes. You, hey, he know how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Go ahead. And to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment. He know how to reserve to the punished. unjust. He know how to reserve the unjust. Some people say, why are these wicked people getting all this reward? Because <laughs> he know how to reserve the unjust until the day of punishment, until payday. But go ahead, finish now, verse 9. That was it? Yes. Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter. We're going to pick it up a little bit. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Verse 37, when you get it, go ahead and read, brother. But as the days of Noah were, uh -huh. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's right. So the second coming of the Lord is going to be just like the days of Noah. We preaching this thing, ain't nobody paying attention. Go ahead. That's why he said he's going to be like a thief in the night. Go ahead. For as in the days that were before the flood, yes. they were eating and drinking, uh -huh. marrying and giving and marrying. Go ahead. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, uh -huh. and knew not until the flood came, yes. and took them all away. Go ahead. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Because the world ain't paying attention to the Lord. They're not watching prophecy like we are. That's why he say he's going to be like a thief in the night. Because the world ain't going to know when he's coming. But some with some understanding, we know. We see the signs. Let's go to Habakkuk, the second chapter. Habakkuk, the second chapter. Habakkuk 2. Because the second coming of man is going to be like the days of Noah, people. We just read that. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, however you pronounce it. The second chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. You get it, go ahead and read, Joseph. I will stand upon my watch. Yes. And set me upon the tower. Go ahead. And will watch and see what he will say unto me. Go ahead. And what I shall answer when I am when I am reproved. Go ahead. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision uh -huh. and make it plain upon tables. Make it plain upon tables. Because they saying that the Lord ain't gonna come back. They've been saying that for years, right? Go ahead. That he may run that read of it. Uh-huh. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Go ahead. But at the end it shall speak. That's right. The vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Go ahead. And not lie. It ain't going to lie, because that's one thing God can't do, and that's lie. Go ahead. Though it tarry. Though it tarry. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It's going to surely come. It will not tarry. It will not tarry. Let's go to Revelation, the 22nd chapter. It's going to come, people. You got to choose the love of God right now. We're in the fourth quarter. This thing is right on top of us. You better make a decision and fast. You gonna serve the Lord or you gonna serve the world? Revelation twenty-two and verse seven, brother Joseph. I'm ready when you are. Behold, I come quickly. Yes. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. That's right. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Skip down to verse ten. And he saith unto me, Yes. Still not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Why? For the time is at hand. Go ahead. He that is unjust. Yes. Let him be unjust still. Because it's too late at this point. Go ahead. And he which is filthy. Uh -huh. Let him be filthy still. Go ahead and read. And he that is righteous. Yes. Let him be righteous still. Go ahead. And he that is holy. Yes. Let him be holy still. Yes. Because at this time it is too late. You whatever you are, this is what it's gonna be. Let's go to the last place. Let's go to James, the first chapter. I hope somebody getting some understanding. I hope y'all with me. 
James, the first chapter, Brother Joseph. And we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 22. James, the first chapter, and verse 22, brother, when you get it, go ahead and read. But be ye doers of the word. This is what you got to be. Be ye doers of the word. And not hearers only. And not hearers only. Go ahead. Deceiving your own self. Because when you a hypocrite, you deceiving your own self. You got to be a doer of the word. Don't just come and hear this thing. And when you leave class, you go and turn back to the world. No, no, no. Keep the love of God. Go ahead. For if any be a hearer of the word uh -huh. and not a doer, he is like unto a man behold his natural face in a glass. Ain't that something? And you forget the man you was. Go ahead and read. For he beholdeth himself uh -huh. and goeth his way. Yes. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he Ain't was. Ain't that something? Huh. Because this world will suck you down like a glass of Kool-Aid. You got to watch this thing. Go ahead and read. But who's so looking into the perfect law of liberty? What's the perfect law of liberty? That's the commandments of God. Go ahead. And continue if there is. Yes. He being not a forgetful hearer. Don't be a forgetful hearer. Go ahead. But a doer of the word. Yes. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Man or woman. Go ahead and read. If any man among you seem to be religious uh -huh. and brileth not his tongue, Go ahead. but deceiveth his own heart, yes. this man's religion is vain. For nothing. Go ahead. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. What is it? To visit the fatherless and the widows in their afflictions. Go ahead. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. And to keep himself unspotted from the world, brothers and sisters. You got to choose the love of God and not the love of the world. Be in the world, but be not of the world. This whole world lies in wickedness. Choose the love of God and not the love of the world. I hope somebody got some understanding in Jesus' name. Thank you for your time.